Happy Sunday, everybody. Steve here. Hope you all are doing well. I've been meaning to talk about this uh, for a while now. I just kept putting it off. So there's the first dad joke of the day. So talking about procrastination today, uh, I was just talking with uh, with Bella uh, the other day about uh, a technique that I, that I learned when I was on active duty called Feed the Beast. And when I was a staff officer, I had a boss that used to tell me, he's like, look, you're, you're working this project, okay? What I'm, what I'm looking for is I don't want the 90% solution two weeks from now, you know, with that much closer to the deadline. I don't want that. I want the, here's my first 10%, second 10, you know, every day, every couple of days, feed the beast. Give me, you know, hey, here's where I'm at. I could go this way or I could go this way. What do you think? You know, I'm leaning this way, you know, getting feedback from, from the boss so that you don't get to the, you know, the 90% solution, you know, a week before the deadline and go and you're totally down the wrong path. So that's a, a technique, but, but feeding a little bit every time, not waiting till the last bit. Um, that's, that's one example. I was thinking about um, when I was in high school um, I had an English class and it was like uh, college prep English and, and we had to do term papers. And that was just, this was the first time any of us had ever done anything like that. And we had to do research and all of this. And uh, this really brings back memories. <laughs> Bring it back. We had to do research. We had to have, you know, at least five different sources. Uh, you had to do little index cards with you know particular format. Of here's the the author and the published date. Here's the pages. Here's all your references. You had to do cards on the eight by twelve cards. You had to do notes of you know for each of these. You had to put all of that in a in a big envelope with your typed term paper. And the term paper had to be you know uh, uh, at least you know eight nine pages or something like that, which. You know, that was a big deal if you'd never done that before. And he would give it to us and go, you know, here's your, here's, it's kind of kind of be on this particular subject. Um, and it's due in, in, uh, in, you know, two months. And uh, every one of us, uh, well, mo most of the folks would, would wait. And usually a couple of weekends before it was due i'd start you know going to the library getting everything you know, back before you had online stuff go to the library get all the books together and check them out and you know finding you know stuff and researching and and i i you know i thought i was you know pretty good you know starting uh you know two weeks before it was due <laughs> and uh and it would just every time would just turn into this herculean monstrous project to get this term paper done and, uh, but I remember this one friend of mine and, uh, you know, we, you know, inevitably we'd kind of, you know, a couple of the, my friends that were in the same class were, you know, living in the same neighborhood. We kind of, you know, get together, play a little basketball, you know, Sunday afternoon. Hey, I'm all done writing it. I just need to type it, whatever. So we take a break, go play some basketball or whatever. And this one friend of mine was like, Hey, so, you know, where are you at on this man? And he's like, oh, man, I haven't even started researching. And. It, this is like the day before, you know, talk about procrastinating. And that, I mean, me waiting as long as I did now, I'd look back and it gives me stress. I think I still have dreams sometimes where I, where, you know, the dreams you, you have where you, you're back in school and you're, and you never went to class and you're, and you show up and it's like the final or whatever. And it just gives me stress, you know, procrastinating. So I was reading, uh, uh, Today, uh, out of this uh, faith alone here, this Martin Luther uh, uh, devotional, and uh, let me get my peepers here. Uh, it's called "Don't Put It Off." Uh, first, you know, this verse from Genesis twenty-four. Um, when they got up the next morning, Ele El Eleazar said, "Send me on my way to my master. Do not detain me now that the Lord has granted success on my journey. Send me on my way so I may go to my master." Now, this scripture passage provides a good example for us. Isaac's servant was eager to take his master's future bride to her groom. We're reminded here that when it comes to doing God's work, we shouldn't keep stalling and procrastinating. We should clear away all the obstacles that keep us from completing what we are supposed to do. 
Even non-Christian writers say that after adequately thinking over a matter, people should follow through with their intentions quickly and bring it to pass without delay. Sallust, the Roman statesman and historian, gave this advice. After thinking it over, act quickly. Bonaventure also made an excellent statement about the subject. Those who pass up great opportunities will be passed over themselves. But worse than all of this is when people postpone doing what God demands. Procrastination results in serious harm. Those who don't answer quickly when the Holy Spirit calls will miss their chance. The Holy Spirit seldom asks more than once. I've learned this from personal experience. Whenever it, it was necessary to pray, read, or take Holy Communion, the longer I put it off, the less I felt the need to do it. The Holy Spirit doesn't give his gifts to those who procrastinate. He prefers those who willingly obey and gladly carry out God's commands without delay. We see this eager attitude in Psalm 119, verse 60. I will hasten and not delay to obey your commands. The Holy Spirit approved of the same eagerness in Rebecca when she quickly gave Eleazar a drink of water and ran to tell her family about Eleazar's visit. Examples like this from the lives of God's servants should inspire us to resist the foolishness of procrastination. So, you know, I, I, it reminds me of a t-shirt I saw in the store uh, a while ago. It said, you know, procrastinators unite, maybe tomorrow. <laughs> and it's uh, just joke, but I mean, it, it is. It's something, you know, we're to be about the Lord's business. You know, God puts something on our heart. But he does, you know, stop and think for a second. I think that there's a, there's a, you know, wise, patient, preparing, planning, you know, getting all the resources together before you step out and do the do the Lord's business is one thing. But but you know, when God makes it clear this is the direction we want you to go, this is what you need to do, and we continue to put it off, continue to procrastinate. You know, it it that's that's not what the Lord's about. Uh, you know, He wants us about His business. So I think a lot of times, you know, I used to talk with my students a lot and, and you could see a lot of times when people, you know, and they look and they see the mountain to climb and they get frustrated by it. They get, they just, it's like, how in the world am I going to climb this mountain? Or, you know, and I, and I would tell them or, or to do this task and it's just like, I never start because it seems so big. Uh, how can I do this? You know, well, God tells us to climb it, climb it. You know how you climb it? You put one foot in front of the other and start. You know, I used to always say that, you know, you know how an, ele an, an ant eats an elephant, right? One bite at a time. So you you you, you got to start off. You got to get about the Lord's work. So um, I, uh, anyway, that that's, uh, I wrote down all my little notes here. I think that's, that's everything I wanted to, to talk about. Uh, anyway, I just, saw that. I thought about that. I was just talking with Bella about it the other day and it just kind of sparked my mind. So get to it. Get about the Lord's work. And uh, I hope you have a great Sunday and uh, we'll see you next time. Take care.